fella. Easy. Hey guys, I wanted to give y'all a real quick update. Now if you've been a subscriber for a while, or you've been following along the old 1976 Chevy Love build, also known as the Vegas truck, then you know in the last video, my boy Trey gave me a 327 for the amount of free. That's right, over here at Chicken Eye Garage, yeah, we like free. Easy on the old pocketbook, don't you see? But in the process of making this video, I started tearing into the engine, and lo and behold, yeah, that's the number one cylinder you're looking at. She was a bit chunky. I cleaned her up, it didn't get any better. So to try to keep this truck project a budget build, we went ahead and set that engine aside, and I acquired a new engine. So without further delay, I hope you enjoy the video. Yes, mug time. <laughs> Better yet, maybe. Small block Chevy 350 time. Let's take a closer look and see what's inside the old double six long bed here. I just picked this up this morning, guys. This came out of a 1987 Chevy square body. This is the old TBI flavor. And he said that is a relatively brand new Holly TBI fuel injection system. He said the compressor's new. He said the alternator's been replaced. I think he even said the water pump was replaced. Don't think he hit it with any paint, but we'll take care of that. Not a bad little find. Some of this stuff I think I can resell. Maybe the cruise control module. Probably won't need that distributor since it's some kind of computer controlled setup. I might just run one of those I got over there. Definitely not going to need any of this. So I'm going to take that intake off and sell all that as one unit. Uh, may sell AC because I'm not putting AC in the Chevy Love for sure. Might be able to recoup some of my money back on this one. So I double checked with Trey before I sold that 327. He said it was okay. He said you keep it, do what you want to with it, sell it, get some money for it, whatever you can get. It's yours. So that's what I did. Ended up paying 700 bucks for this engine. Didn't really knock him down too much. He wanted 750, but he lived over almost an hour and a half away. I said, could you help a brother out on a little gas money and I'll give you 700. He said, I don't have a problem with that. He said, I've gotten about tired of answering all those FB market messages. I knew what he was talking about. I really, really, really feel confident that this is gonna be a good engine. Really nice guy, loved his, dude, he had a nice house. I'm telling you guys, it was really nice. Very, very nice. A lot of toys. A lot of toys. I wish I could uh, wish I could afford what he could afford. But over here in Chicken Eye Garage, use the Chicken Eye and look around. I mean, this ain't the lap of luxury. I'm just a working man, small budget. A lot of you guys are just like me. Just like me, small budget. You just ain't got a whole lot of money. So now, I still got that transmission. We got an engine. We got an empty engine bay in a 1976 Chevy Love. So we need to start putting puzzle pieces together and making stuff happen. All right, well, we're heading into a new weekend. And since we officially have an engine for the old 1976 Chevy Love, we need to start getting off into this thing and getting it ready to go in betwixt the frame rails. Now, second things first, I need to get a carbureted intake manifold for this engine. This came out of an 87 square booty, and she's got the old TBI system. So I need to eliminate all that junk and go carbureted. Now, off up in that shelfing right there is an AVS2 box, and there is a AVS650 under the hood of the old double six. And in that box, is the old carburetor that used to be on it. It's a 600 CFM Edelbrock manual choke. And that's what's gonna go on top of this engine and hopefully run off in that truck. So I need to pick that up tomorrow at Summit Racing. 
but in doing so I'm gonna go ahead and return that Summit 1103 cam stick and those Howard lifters I had originally bought all that stuff from that 327 that Trey gave me but since that engine ended up being bad now we got this right here and so I'm gonna need a little bit of that money's back to help pay for the intake the intake gaskets I'm gonna go ahead and get some ARP bolts and I'm gonna try a set of motor mounts that I found that might work. Now it might take a little fabrication, but I got a Hobart 140 handler. So we are gonna handle a little bit of fabrication in this situation. Not trying, to, not trying to sound like pudding, but that's just how it came out. So that's what I gotta do tomorrow. I gotta pick up an intake and return that stuff. First things first, is I need to take the whole front end off. One, I can't use none of this stuff. All this stuff is long water pump flavor and I need the uh, the short setup so I can gain an extra inch. <laughs> Story of my life, always trying to accumulate an extra inch. So that's what I need to do. I am gonna leave the TBI and intake on for now and put a bag over it. That way nothing gets down in there and I'm gonna keep the, keep the uh, exhaust manifolds on. Cause I wanna go ahead and clean this up and power wash it. And I don't want no water getting inside the engine. I really feel confident that this engine's good. The guy I talked to, really cool guy, uh, he works his butt off for a living and you can tell. He's got a nice house, lots of toys. So I don't see I don't see anybody acquiring that kind of stuff, working their butt off, being a liar and uh and selling crappy stuff. I have a feeling that engine's good, but that remains to be seen. That's why I'm not doing any cam swaps. I just want to get this thing in the truck get everything hooked up, get this thing up and running and see if this thing hits on all eight cylinders and doesn't puff out blue smoke, don't have an excessive amount of blow by, the whole nine there. And then once that's done, then we'll debate whether we, we want to do a cam swap or not. It's got those old truck TBI heads. They're not even Vortec heads, even though they have the center bolt valve covers. These are the pre-Vortec heads. They're really not designed for power. So, you know, we'll have to see if we're gonna do anything with that. If I decide to keep this truck, which I have been thinking about it lately, then we'll, we'll determine that in a later date. For now, I just want to get that engine cleaned up, painted. I think I am going to paint this black because it's already black, even though the old crusty 327, I was going to paint it orange because I thought that orange would look pretty good up again, that blue. But since this is already painted and I don't have to mess with any of that stuff, I think I'm just going to leave it black. It's just going to be a lot faster and a lot less labor involved in trying to do a color change. So there it is. I've rambled on for quite a few minutes now, but you kind of caught up. I'm not going to bore y'all with taking this whole front end off. I'm just going to take it off, do what I got to do there, power wash it, clean it up. And then after that, tomorrow morning, we'll get an intake at Summit Racing, return the old bump stick and the lifters, and uh, use that money to get what I need. And uh, we'll start and start putting that engine together once it's all painted, and then drop her in between the frame rails. Don't know if that's gonna happen this weekend, but it will be happening very, very soon. All right, guys, it's been about six minutes of mug time. <laughs> I know y'all enjoy it. I'm gonna have to shut the old camera down because I gotta get to work. So we're gonna just we're going to just start cutting away, figuring it out. These are going to be some you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Oh, uh, Putin doing a little rust repair on that old 76 GMC he built. All right, Putin. Front wheel there. Take a break. So it's a new morning, Saturday morning, and it's been raining all day. But we got a little bit of a break. I just came back from Summit Racing and uh, picked up everything I pretty much needed. We'll look at all that stuff later. Over here, setting over here, we got some one can of primer, and I'll show you why I bought that. We got a couple of cans of gloss black, a couple of cans of gloss clear. Have you bought a can of paint lately? That's twelve dollars and fifty cents a can. I remember when you could go buy a can for about five, six dollars, and you know what? That wasn't all that long ago. But here we are, three fifty been pressure washed cleaned up all that good stuff this engine has been at some point chevrolet orange the black was coming off in certain spots and uh there was some orange paint under there i don't know if this thing was rebuilt and then 
the guy I bought it from maybe took it out for whatever reason and uh, painted it black. I don't know. I don't know why it's orange and now black. Uh, but whoever painted it and didn't do a very good job probably didn't use primer. So that's why I bought a can of primer because we've got a lot of bare steel spots. We need to knock the rust off of it. Do the final cleanup and then we can skeet a little paint on it. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is move the 283 to the engine cradle and put the 350 on the engine stand here because I can rotate that plus there's nothing in the way for me painting it plus it's a little bit more elevated better for painting that's a little too low to the ground but since there's a break in the rain I need to go ahead and move this outside for a moment I think we got some more rain coming so I need to kind of hurry at least get this outside get all that all that swapped around situated whatever I got to do there the rain starts coming back in and I can bring the truck in and just kind of fill in this gap here park it on this side a little bit and I'll still have plenty of room to do my painting work and whatever I got to do there all right here we go I'm back from Summit Racing and I got a lot of work to do <laughs> he's getting after it sure you want a professional removal there don't care about keeping the shape or nothing like that We got a little bit more room for some activities. Want to do a half flip for small block Chevys and a full flip for big block. So then we're doing small for one any one flip. And yes, if you thought that was stupid, that's because it was. like that. The 283 now rolls like a Cadillac. Oh. Oh, yeah. Alright, switcheroo is complete. So now I gotta finish tearing this engine down. You get those manifolds off, get the intake manifold off, get it on Facebook Market so I can recoup a little bit of the monies, don't you see? Go ahead and pull that balancer off. I think that's it. Intake, manifolds, balancer, and start getting this thing ready for a little GB, a little gloss black. There we go. Take ports, not too carboned up, nothing out of the ordinary that I'm seeing anyways. Balancer, dipstick, we can start cleaning it up. Well it started raining outside again and I didn't want to deal with her like I did last time. Last time I left her out in the rain, I had to hear about it. <laughs> Oh yeah, she will talk to you sometimes. All right, back to work. <laughs> yeah, I have a pink shark yeah. upon my hood, don't you see? <laughs> Some of the things you don't get to see on camera. So I got everything cleaned up for the most part. Intake surface looks pretty good. China walls look good. 
keep the dirt and debris out. Use some old bags, grocery bags. In front of these heads cleaned up. We'll try to clean this up really good as well. I will not pan. I mean, I'll clean it up and scuff it up, but I'm not gonna really mess with it too much. You know, we'll skeet some paint on there, make it look good again. Here, I need you to clean my hood. Polish it up. We got it all masked up on the top. Exhaust ports are covered up. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those spark plugs in. Keep that from paint from getting in there and stuff like that. I did pull off a couple. Looks like it's been running pretty good, so that's good. A little trick I like to do, I just like to use a couple of cheap water pump gaskets. Cut off that one end right there. That way you can get paint behind it. Just run a couple of bolts. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time sanding on this thing, scuffing it up. It is what it is. Just basically, this is the part you're going to see. So I wanted to get that nice and smooth. Try to get the valve covers cleaned up. Time and chain cover actually looks pretty good, so oil pan looks really good as far as the paint, but we will scuff it up a little bit in the morning. Wipe this thing down one last time, blow it off, hit all these nooks and crannies, and then we'll start using that cheap $12.50 can of paint. Start make, making that thing look good again, back to black. We got a new morning, guys. Sunday morning. <laughs> Table's a little chaotic. And it's a little tight in here because I still got the truck in here and probably going to leave it in here today because it's been raining all night last night and I think it's still raining right now. She's scuffed up. She's blown off. She's wiped down as good as it's going to be. All right. Let's start shooting some primer on this thing and then some black. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let that primer marinate and then we'll skeet the black on it. I believe we got a break on the rain. So I moved the old double six outside because I noticed the old primer overspray was starting to dust the old hood and stuff. Primer overspray wipes off a lot easier. Once I start skeeting that black on there, it's a little stickier. It says reply all coats within one hour. And it's been setting about 20, 30 minutes. Primer don't take that long to dry. So enough rambling. Let's get to painting. All right, the old 350 is officially painted, and I got two coats of pretty heavy clear on it. Looks pretty good. Pull y'all in here and show you what it looks like, especially on the front side. Yeah, nice little reflection there. Not too bad. Not perfect, but it turned out better than I thought it would. So now I'm just gonna let that marinate, probably for a day before I put on the intake. There's the new intake manifold right there. I'm debating on just clear coating this thing by itself. I need to do a little research and see if that can be done and will it stick and, and stay stuck to the aluminum. Unfortunately, it started raining again, so I'm over here sopping up the water off the truck. Yeah. I gotta do the bed as well, because if I don't get that water off, it leaves water, water spots on the uh, wood there, and it's hard to get off, so. And on another side note, my power steering decided to take a poop on me. It is very, very intermittent. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping it's just a bad pump, but I have a sneaky suspicion 
it's a bad box so <laughs> yeah fun times over here at chicken eye garage all right guys it is monday it's officially motor monday so speaking of motors we got the 350 paint's all dry yesterday i was going to go ahead and set the intake on here get it all sealed up gasketed up silicone let all that marinate cure for the week and we can set that motor start getting that thing in position on the old chevy love but i learned something yesterday unbeknownst to me these cylinder heads are what i call bisexual heads and what i mean by that is the bolt hole pattern don't know what's going on they, they we got two going one direction we got two going the other direction i've built a few small block chevys in my day but i'm not no master wizard on all of them now i know about the vortex i know they got the center bolt valve cover and they got the the bolt hole pattern on the intakes different they're on all four corners they're kind of more vertical and there's no bolts in the middle well he's got bolts in the middle and they got the traditional angle on the four corners but the two in the middle they're on their own program why don't you go ahead and utilize that chicken eye let's take a closer look we'll take and let me show y'all what i'm talking about uh-huh yeah two bolt holes threads yeah yeah uh-huh uh -huh. you see the difference see 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 so yesterday i set the intake on here because i wanted to get a look at it before i started gluing her down to new gasket man she was looking good but then that's when i caught it i noticed those bolt holes were i mean they were way off and i didn't know what was going on until i started taking a closer look and realized those two holes are a different angle from the four corner ones so i you know i was like oh man now what i got what kind of worms i got to deal with now so i looked up 1987 chevrolet silverado and four intakes came up and therefore they call it the tbi 350 or 575 liter tbi engine and they have a wind intake i have to go get i basically need to take that one back spend 65 more dollars to go get the wind intake manifold but it is what it is outside of changing the uh, tbi heads to something aftermarket which i'm not doing at least not right now maybe if i decide to keep the truck down the road we might but that's my tech tip learned tip for the day tbi is a totally different animal from vortex and or traditional small block chevy bolt hole patterns so if you didn't know now you know all right so at some point this week i'm gonna go to summit racing that way i can have that intake mounted and then saturday morning we can crack open that door push the old vegas truck in and start assessing what we got to do inside the engine bay and drop that three and a half in the pocket all right y'all guys have a good week all right i got the new intake let's open it up and take a look if you're struggling you got any doubts that's all you need to do all right we got some got some pipe plugs four bolts that might be for those four bolts that are in the middle there it is let me unbag this thing and we'll look at it closer not a bad looking intake i think she sets a little higher than that edelbrock i was trying to run but unfortunately yep but overall this is what i need because if you see the bolt pattern there you see how that's more traditional style like on the old 283 here but then you get to these bolt holes you can kind of see it's not straight up and down but it's a little bit more angled up and then those are back to normal and you can kind of even tell it's bossed out so that's probably why they gave you bolts at least four of them it's for this two two spots right there but unfortunately, them is the only intakes they offer for these old bisexual heads. So let's go ahead and set the intake on top of it. That way you can kind of get a glimpse of how those bolt holes line up. And this will be my first time seeing it as well. Oh yeah, that intake looks really, really good. Up again, that black. There's the bolt holes there. Line up really good, and that's without the intake gaskets. And then there's more of the traditional angle. They're lining up pretty good as well. I believe they offered a 
special intake gasket for these intake and heads as well. I already got these, I already opened them up, and I didn't want to try to return these. So I think I can make these work. You just got to trim that hole on the two or on the four bolt holes in the center. Trim that gasket a little bit, and I think everything will work just fine. Let me go ahead and take the intake off, set up one gasket on there so you can see what I'm talking about. See there? Slightly off. Not too bad. I think we can trim that, make it fit, and it'll work. And we'll just knock out these uh, perforated squares. And then just sandwich these in here. Which I will leave open. When I did the uh, AVS650 in this truck, I ended up having intake gasket issues. There's a video out on that. I can put the link, or I can put the uh, card here somewhere so you can click on it if you want to check it out. But I was having fuel getting inside the engine. But to make a long story short, ended up being an intake gasket failure. And the gaskets I ran, I could not block off exhaust crossover. So I left it open. It had these already in it. They were Felpro 1256s. These were already sandwiched in the square. And believe it or not, I actually think the engine runs a little bit better. It, and it really didn't affect starting, hard, hot starts, or any of that stuff after running it, in, even in during the summer. And I even think the exhaust note was a little bit more balanced and mellow. And it was subtle, but I could tell it. And I hear this truck all the time running. So we're going to leave the exhaust crossover open. We've got the new special designed intake for the bisexual bolt pattern on these heads. You just got to do a little trimming on those gaskets. And I can get this thing sandwiched on. And then come Saturday morning, bright and early, we're going to push the old love truck right in here. We'll have to ease this one outside, but it's not going to be raining this weekend, so that's good. She don't have to get wet. All right, and I will see y'all Saturday morning. One gasket down, got one more to go. Went ahead and installed the, the uh, exhaust crossover metal plate. You got to take the perforated piece off, and you will have to enlarge the hole ever so slightly with a razor blade. They don't set flush like I like. Got the old holes elongated ever so slightly. Might need to do that one just a hair more. Let's take it to the cylinder head here. Let's look at it. See, that's a low, whole lot better. Need to line that up with the other holes. As you can see, a whole lot better. Might need to tweak that just a little bit more. But you kind of get the idea. I did notice these gaskets, when I guess they're cutting out these holes or whatever, I noticed there's pieces of fiber or paper or whatever this stuff's made out of. Every, every once in a while you find a little piece sticking out. So it wouldn't hurt to take a exacto knife, new blade or fresh razor blade or whatever and just kind of clean all that stuff up as you see it. I don't think I've ever used Edelbrock gaskets before or if I have I don't remember. Might be the last time. They're okay. I think they'll work just fine. Of course, you know, I haven't ran the engine so I don't know if they're going to leak or not. I like Felpro better. But I don't, I, honestly, I don't even know why I went with these. But I did, and we're going to work with it. Wind intake manifold, yet again. She was a little nasty, so I gave her a soap and water bath. Because these old Hans kept getting a silver metallic grayish color on the old fingertips. So I soaped her down with a little soap and water, a little Dawn soap, right in her kitchen sink, and a sponge. Cleaned her up, blew out all the crevices, bolt holes, and all that stuff. I'm going to wipe her down one more time. Blow it out one more time, and then she should be good to install. You could throw it in the dishwasher as well. Just be careful. Mama catches you doing something like that. <laughs> oh, you'll know where you'll be at. All right, back to work. Real quick, guys. This is how I do it. This is the side of the gasket that will face the cylinder head. I have always put a thin, thin, thin layer of RTV. Even though most gaskets or most companies say install their gaskets dry, I do this. I had one leak on me one time, never again, because, you know, it's kind of a pain in the, yeah. So I've already done this one, plus it kind of keeps it in place. You can use that gasket cinch, whatever you want to do there. I do that. See all those little imperfections in the cylinder head? Little pitting and stuff? See that right there? It's even more predominant there. That's why I do it. You do what you want. Old Charlie Chicken Eye Garage guy. That's how I do it. Good morning. Saturday morning. We installed the intake last night. RTV is probably fully cured by now. 
doesn't matter because the engine ain't gonna be running anytime soon. The only thing I need to do is take the old lifting apparatus off that 283 over there, put it on here, and then we can get that engine hoist in position and dangle that old 350 right off the chain and start test fitting it inside the Chevy Love. But we have a small problem. We have a 1966 Chevy C10 in the garage and we need a 1976 Chevy Love inside the garage. So I'm gonna make that happen, the old switcheroo, right now. There it is, 76 Chevy Love. Let's pull the hood off. It's not bolted down, so we can just pick it up, set it on top of the roof, and assess what we gotta do. Let me pull y'all in and show you what we got to work with. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Put those two together. I got some stuff in the way. I got, this is part of the fuel system there. Fuel line going to the tank. All this heater hose crap's got to go. We're going to take all that stuff off. This heater control valve's leaking, so that's junk. Yes, I just need to do something with that. That's done. Don't need this belt. Don't need the clutch slave cylinder anymore. That'll have to be removed. There's a part that went to the slave cylinder. I don't know if that tab's going to be in the way. We'll probably have to cut that off. Same thing with this pulley cable system. That is part of the parking brake. I don't, I'm not going to mess with that unless it just needs to be cut off. There's the frame pads for the motor mounts. Don't know where that's going to be in position to the mounting pads on the uh, 350. I won't know until I get that thing in here. And in order to do that, I need to stop talking, get that engine hoist in position, and get that three and a half dangling off the chain. Got all that cleaned up. Motor plates installed. You know what's next. Run into a small issue. So I'm gonna have to jack the truck up just a bit, put it on some jack stands, or figure out how to get it just high enough to where this will slide up under it. I don't want it too high in the air. So let me take care of that real quick. Yeah. Perfect. Ooh. Easy, big fella. Easy. It's go time. So let's slowly start lowering this thing and uh, see what we're working with. Easy, slow. What are you about to hit? Whoa, too fast. You guys, y'all watch the back of that. Make sure it doesn't hit anything. What'd you see, Jason? Yeah, it is hitting the hood hinge. Or the hood latch. You are correct. Johnny, you are right. We're just about to hit that. What are you seeing, David? Oh, it's, yeah, it is hitting that wire. Let me get that. Good catch, guys. Good catch. Teamwork, people. Teamwork. Jason, what'd you see again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you reminded me about that cable, didn't you? I almost forgot about it. I really appreciate all this help. I really do. Well, I confirmed that this needs to come off. This is going to have to be removed in the way so more likely this thing won't have parking brake or at least it won't have parking brake in the traditional sense that it has here i'm gonna have to cut this uh slave cylinder mounting tab there get all that out of there as well other side no issues but yeah as you can see we're gonna have to definitely push it back because there's no way a balancer is gonna go on that crank snout so you see what i gotta do i'm not gonna bore y'all with cutting off brackets and stuff i'm gonna have to pull the engine back out get all that stuff removed 
whittled off whatever I got to do there and then we'll re retest fit it and um, see if those motor mounts that I bought are engine swap mounts I think they're kind of universal we'll see if that stuff works if it does great if it doesn't then back to square one as far as mounting this thing we're sure gonna look pretty good in this uh, engine bay can't wait I think I got about as much as I can get removed and looking pretty good here went ahead and pull that bar off for the parking brake pull the cable just put, tuck the cable out of the way for now so let me get my cutoff wheel I'm gonna cut this tab off no longer need it try to cut this without damaging it maybe I can reuse it that way it has parking brake otherwise I'm just not gonna worry about it caps on that back here is the Oh, Derek, yes, doing a wheel it run on a tractor, zero degree weather, has a cam in on the it. snow. He's a better man than I am. Timer's cam. I need you to take a break. So I went ahead and removed those inner fender, rubber covered flat things, whatever. I kind of opened that up pretty good, make it a little easier for welding and whatever we got to do off in there. I thought I'd show y'all. We finally got some new tennis shoes on this thing. 185, 75, 14. So, you know, they're designed for traction. Y'all got some new hubcaps. Yeah, I think they look pretty good. I think they look pretty good. We got two more right there for the other side. I haven't installed those yet. I just did that for a little picture, cover, thumbnail, image, YouTube thing. So, but yeah, they look pretty good. Need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the wheels, but whew, that's way down the line for that. This is the current process. That into that. I tell you what, if this whole turbo 350, 350 engine setup doesn't work, I guess we can just use my feet to make this thing run. <laughs> this one is taking a break. 5285. So I can tell you immediately that's a 52. Watch the wheel it run in the snow, bicycle garage nine. flavor. But this is in fact a 1952 we'll uh, Chevy Love M tractor. Cut some Let's brackets see. off. So let me go ahead and clean up those edges get that ground down smooth as best as possible we'll go ahead and test fit the 350 for the second time see what else needs to be cut off and removed i'm in a cutting mood today guys watch yourself good enough for now we'll do a better job cleaning up later now we ain't got nothing in our way so let's drop the 350 back in the hole a lot more clearance to go back I don't know how far back these things have to go. I mean, you have to count. There needs to be a distributor here as well. well. Let's go lower it down some more. We probably need to go a little lower as far as when it gets mounted. I think right now this is a good stopping point. So the more I look at this, it's going to have to go down some more, I think, because of that is where one of the... Follow that contour right there, and that's where the bell housing of the Turbo 350 goes. I'm thinking it's gonna to have to go down lower. And if you look at the mounting bosses of the motor mounts on, or the mounting bosses for the motor mounts on the engine here, we're interfering right here at minimum. Now we got, now I'm looking at another problem, exhaust manifolds. I'm almost positive this isn't gonna work. I don't think anyways. I mean, it could possibly it just depends on where this engine sits permanently if that's going to work or not mine are the more center center exhaust opening which is right where this is at now if i cut all that off am i gonna is that gonna be is that gonna be enough room they do angle back the ones i have kind of arch back at a 45 give or take i can already promise you right here we're gonna basically we're not having a parking brake we're gonna have to cut that rod off and be done with that more than likely we're going to, have to cut this box off and be done with that but let me go get the motor mounts they're in the 66 truck and i'll show you what that looks like and then we'll kind of devise a game plan and see what all we got to do all right 
So these are the motor mounts I got. There's the part number. I'll put a link in the description if these work. Remains to be seen. But they say they fit up to 24 to 30 inch frame width, which I just measured the frame over there, and it's 25. There you go, bolts. These are the one, these are the part that mounts to the engine. So V8 is going to set like that, and that's probably going to set level. And then this is the part that you will weld on. And then it actually comes with the motor mounts themselves, the polyurethane mounts or whatever. I can figure all that out. There's some destructions. There you go. Kind of get the idea, right? I we'll have to weld that plate on, and then it sets on like that. At minimum, these will have to come, this will have to be cut off this tab right here or we cut the whole box off oh I think that's my wife calling serenity now so my wife's Toyota Venza the radiator decided to start leaking so you know what that means Fun times, the chicken eye garage. So I did a real quick off camera test fit, dropped the engine back in the hole, loosely mounted these to the engine just to kind of see where it was at. And it looks like that first hole, or the one nearest the mount, is probably the one I'm gonna have to use in junction with this. But it looks like I'm gonna have to like I kind of confirmed, I'm gonna have to remove the, the factory welded mount for the Isuzu motor, because she's not gonna be a Isuzu no more. I can tell you that right now. She's gonna be a small block Chevy. So let me stop chit-chatting. Let me uh, set up the cutting apparatus. Start cutting some metal. So I got that one tab cut off. It's basically to whatever that thing do does. She now gone. Now I'm trying to figure out the best approach to doing this. Walk it up there. Honestly, what I think I'm gonna do, cut down here in the middle, cut to right through here somewhere. Do it that way, because it's this is kind of all in the way. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off as well. A little grease cover. Interesting. Anyways, yeah, let me quarterback through that and then we'll get going. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. I'm not gonna bore y'all with that. Once that's done, I'll clean up all the grinds or the cuts and the wells and all that, get all that stuff smooth. And then we'll lift that thing back up, put her in the hole and see how these mounts are gonna work. That's some serious, serious work right there. My back's starting to get sore. And this is mostly done on this side. Pretty smooth, I still need to clean that up. That side's mostly done as well. So let me clean myself up and then we'll stick that thing right back in the hole. So the motor mounts themselves are bolted to the, loosely bolted to the motor itself. And then that's the actual mount that welds to the frame. And it looks like that first inner hole is the one that's gonna line up. The only thing I need to figure out is how high I need to make this. Same thing on this side probably. Yep, it's gonna line up on that first hole, so I believe these will work. Engine still needs to go down some and back. Probably more down than back, because I mean we still have a distributor that has to sit here, so as far as the plate that welds to the frame, I need to determine where it's gonna be located and how much of a distance between the two the pads take up in thickness. Once those mounts are sandwiched together. What's the difference between the two as far as uh, the thickness? 
But I think this old motor mount kit is gonna work. I'm about 95% confident. The only thing that makes me a little nervous is once I cut the actual mount that bolts to the engine, I own them. And at $111 for the kit, I wanna make sure triple, quadruple, whatever is past that duple, I need to do all those checks. That way I know these are gonna work. But like I said, I'm pretty 95% confident they are. We'll go ahead and wrap it up for the day. Pull the engine back out. I don't even know where to set it. I need to set it somewhere. Or maybe put it back on the engine stand. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll, I'll figure that out off camera. And unfortunately, it looks like tomorrow, instead of working on this, I'm going to be working on my wife's car, getting that radiator replaced. That way she can go back to work on Monday. So got to take care of the priorities first. This thing is far from a priority. My wife's cars, it is so. That's what I'll be doing tomorrow. Hopefully it won't take too long, but you know how that stuff goes. All right, I will catch y'all tomorrow, and hopefully we can get some, get some stuff done on the old Vegas truck. Oh, yeah. One mount is cut. I got one more to go. That means I own this kit now, so I got to make this thing work. And speaking of work, I need to get to it. Oh, yeah. We got them both cut. Cut one, cut two. Same process, let me set all that up, get it hanging off the chain, and then we'll drop it back in the hole. Don't you know. Motor mounts in place, fully bolted in, all three bolts. And I went ahead and put the distributor that came with this engine when I bought it for testing purposes. That way I know how far I need to go in before it hits the firewall. I'd rather use this distributor versus the one that's on the 283 because that's probably the one I'm gonna run for now because it worked when I took it out. It's a points distributor, but it's, but it's been converted to the Petronics little ignition module and it worked when I took it out. So let's drop it in the hole. All right, here we go. Good clearance on that distributor here. If I was to use this one anyways, I could probably go back just a bit more. Looks like it, it's low enough to work. And think about it this way. It may have, this engine may have to rock back some once the transmission in place. We'll have to get that uh, well, I think it's three degree drop. That may go down in the back a little bit more. Got this in place, loosely bolted in. There's not a whole lot of frame left over to weld to. Some meat there to, to, to really burn in. I definitely have to do the top and probably the bottom as well. I'm also gonna have to trim that bracket. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's hard to do this with the engine hoist in the way. I don't have nothing in place here. And I'll tell you what I've also thought about doing. See this cutoff end right here? Watch this. Ooh, little backside trimming. And that's definitely a viable option. And I can locate that however I want to once I figure out the location. It's compact, it's small, definitely strong because of the way it's designed. It's pretty thick, plus it's folded over, kind of gusseted itself. Guys, don't tempt me with a good time. I'll make this thing work. The only thing I'd have to come up with is some kind of polyurethane disc to sandwich in between the two. And I think that would be an easy find. And I can make that work. <laughs> I ain't lying while I'm talking. The more I think about that, the more I like that. Not that this ain't gonna work. I can guarantee you right now, 75% of this backside is gonna have to be cut off. I don't know if y'all could see that. Probably hard to see, but a lot of that's gonna have to be cut off just to make it work. As far as the distributor, there it is right there. That's what I'm gonna be running. It worked when I took this out. So it should work still. It's just a factory points distributor that's been converted over. The one that came with the engine, got pretty good clearance. As far as rotating, I think, you know, this speedometer cable bracket may have to go away. That's the least of my concern. I can tell you that right now. My concern is, is locating the engine mounts. Once I figure that part out, get that tack welded in place. And that ain't it. That's, that's the, that's the, that's the, yeah, that's part of it. That's most of it. I still gotta bolt that to the engine, hang all that stuff off the chain. I do got one of those uh, engine load levers right here. It came with that engine hoist when I bought it years ago. That will work. I can tell you right now, it's gonna be, get way up there. We got to rotate thing, that like a water slide drop, you know drop it in the hole and then rotate it back the other way and then get it in there. I do have one of those polyurethane pads 
for this transmission, but the pad needs to mount to something. So we need to figure out the back side of that. Once that is figured out, and all the angles look right, and all the clearances look right, and everything looks good, then I can officially burn the motor mounts in, whichever ones I go with, the cutoff pieces or that, and then whatever I'm gonna do on the back side for the transmission. But guess what? I can't do that talking to y'all. I need to get to work. I know y'all like being tuned in on the mug, but let me retire this thing for now because it's gotta do a little work, all right? A lot of progress made off camera, but here you go. Frame is now cleaned up. Brackets cut, cleaned up. I even got the biscuit sandwiched down quite a bit as if I was mounting the frame or mounting the engine permanently. The engine is level. If you look at that socket compared to the frame, it looks like it's pretty square and perpendicular. So that looks good. Same thing on this side. Biscuit sandwiched in, frame cleaned up ready for some tack welds. So now what I need to do is burn in some couple of good strong tacks to hold that plate in place. And we're gonna accomplish that with the old Hobart 140 handler. I haven't used her in a while, so I need to brush up on my skills. I still don't have this set up for MIG gas. I, I don't know why I haven't bought the bottle. I guess I just haven't really had the extra 350 to get one, a bottle sent to you. You can actually order them from Amazon, believe it or not. and I believe it's from US, USA made gas, I guess, or whatever. The tank's USA made, certified for, you know, welding, holding gas, all that sort of stuff. So I haven't set that up, but you guess what? I don't give a flux, because we gonna flux it up. It's go time. That one's a little bit better. There you go. Everything is in position. No flux core tack. I got it pretty hot. I think penetrated enough to hold in front of the engine, I believe. Still got my, although it be it tight, still got my clearance on this distributor. Same thing there. Don't look half bad. All in all, I think the old engine mounts look pretty decent. And with going with these and eliminating this motor pad that was original to it, I may have opened up the chance to run the ram horn manifolds. I got some in the attic that 45 back. Hopefully I can use those. I, I really hope I can. I do have those for backup. Don't know if they'll work, but they're ugly and I don't want to run them. I want to run the other ones. There you go. Motor mounts are temporarily installed. Maybe even permanently installed if, if they're in a good location. And I'll go ahead and burn them in where they're at. If not, then we'll cut the tacks and do whatever we got to do there. However, I still need to mount that to the engine and do the final yeah, like we talked about earlier. I think off camera I'm going to drop that oil pan to wrap the day up and see what it looks like in there, plus get all the oil out. If you didn't know, if you didn't catch the last video, my buddy Trey gave me that transmission, so it didn't cost me a thing. So if it's bad, I need to go find me another one or have that rebuilt or even maybe try to rebuild it myself. I've never done that. I've always wanted to do a, a transmission. Turbo 350 flavor. That old Hobart 140 handler, it handled it. She fluxed it up. I can tell you that right now. She fluxed it up. Biggest welder they make for a 110 outlet. I got an isolated 20 amp over there behind that black and yellow bin. And uh, she's never kicked that breaker. And good welder. Really like it. Can't wait to get it set up for MIG. Maybe some year I will. I think it looks pretty good though. Looking good in here. Got a long ways to go. It's nice to make progress. I stayed home today. My kids are off. It's President's Day. My daughter went to daycare because they had a 
field trip she wanted to go to and my son stayed home. So I caught up with what I missed out on yesterday because I worked on my wife's car yesterday replacing that radiator. She texted me earlier saying I had no issues. So obviously I did something right there. Every once in the blue moon, I'll fix something right. <laughs> In about an hour and a half, my wife will be home, so I need to get all this cleaned up. Once I get everything put away, put back to the way it was, and we'll try to hopefully get that pan off that Turbo 350. See what the, get the oil out of it. That's the main reason I need to take it out. So, like I talked about earlier, when the, once I start 90 in that thing vertical, all that oil is going to come out. So, I also wanted to say this: I was going to pretty much wrap up the video now. But I think for that one person, there's going to be people out there that's going to look up for a Chevy Love 350 swap. I think I'm going to make this a longer video, and we're going to show the process, engine, and transmission all in one video. So whoever checks the video out, they'll get the meat and taters, what they need, and they'll also get the dessert. Looking at this mug. <laughs> Enough playing around. I got work to do. There she is. Hanging off the chain. I got the pan off. Let's see what I found in there. Now inside this pan leaves a little to be desired as far as I'm concerned. We got we got all kinds of stuff going on here. You hear that? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, piece of debris there. I heard a metal, yep, yeah, there's a metal chunk. Just saw that. I didn't even realize that was in there. We got some chunkiness, this donut magnet thing, full of stuff here. Big chunk there, not good. And the reason why this oil looks like strawberry milkshake, when I got this transmission from my buddy Trey, that thing, that's your hole for your dipstick. That hole is wide open. And so at some point, however long, this thing has been setting, moisture got in there and or water possibly causing that pinkish looking color. Yeah, I would say she's been sitting a while. Now, if you're unaware, I will say it again. Old Trey gave me that transmission for free. However, I believe he purchased it on Facebook Market. So you know there's a lot of honest people on there selling stuff every day. But there it is, transmission, turbo 350 flavor. Chunky oil pan. Now I'm about to clean that thing up and put it back on. I just wanted to get all the fluid out of it and obviously see what was inside it. Has this thing got any gears in it or is it all, uh, is it a whole bunch of neutrals? We'll find out sooner or later. When I do decide to put it back to the way it's supposed to be, I'll put a new filter, fill it up with some good fluid, rebuild in a bottle, and hopefully everything will work. But tomorrow morning, we gotta take that ugly thing there and that not so ugly engine right there. And we're gonna have to marry these in holy matrimony. And then we're gonna ship them off to Vegas for their honeymoon. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be a good time tomorrow in old Chicken Eye Garage. I got work to do. Daddy. Yeah, buddy? Airplane? Airplane? Yeah. Oh yeah. My boy likes airplanes. And I think that's cool. It took about a couple hours to do this ceremony here. It was a private, private wedding, so uh, wasn't very many guests. The only guest was me. But in all seriousness, they're made it. I'm already not liking this because it's but the way they got this thing. They got the link in here, vertical. And yeah, so when you lift it up, it twists the engine and transmission together. So I don't like using this load leveler too much versus the plate. But this gives me my rotational needs that I need. As you can see right there, it's rotating it back. And it kind of leveled it out. Honeymoon, Vegas, let's do it. No, this isn't gonna work. I mean, I'm, I'm an inch or two away from hitting the ceiling. Cylinder's probably maxed out, or about to be maxed out, and I've just lost all my rotation. 
part of the reason why is that the chains are too far apart so it's not letting it rotate anymore as you can see it's hitting right there now I could probably correct that by moving the chain somewhere else seeing how much I have to lift it up just to yeah I don't I don't think that's gonna work I don't know I'm, I'm not too confident that's gonna work so second attempt I'm thinking of just going in the first hole on the motor plate I mean it's gonna dangle down and maybe I can lift it up set it in the hole here and then start easing it down and then I got a floor jack we can work it up in there so let's try attempt number two and see what results we get so we got it hanging off the first hole and I'll be honest with you that's making me nervous right now it's a whole lot of weight on them aluminum threads I hope they hold up all right enough looking at it hanging off the chain let's see if we can get it inside the Vegas truck Ooh, we're cutting it close ain't we but we don't need to go any higher because we're over the lowest point so with that being said let's see if we can get this in here inside in there and then figure out how we're gonna rotate it if everything works out all right chickens in the background are making noise so that's good a little background music for chicken eye garage Well, I'm having to force it kind of in there. It's kind of working, but still got to clear that. And I can't really drop it too much right now. I'm going to smack that oil pan and mess up my gloss black at $12.50 a can. I don't know. Let me keep working at it and see what I can come up with. Well, good thing the truck ain't been repainted. I scarred it up pretty good. Before I go any lower, I'm going to have to at least remove this. Wasn't that big a deal when it was just the engine because I could just kind of twist the engine and all that stuff. We'll remove that real quick. Go down a little bit more. Now we're a few inches off the ground on the tail shaft, but see, see what I'm saying? Look at that. That's why that shaft needs to be short. That's probably the only time you'll want a shorter shaft. <laughs> yeah, guys, I don't know. With everything being mated together, I don't know how this is going to work. And I don't want to remove this because I might use that to build off so I can actually permanently make a mount with a turbo 350. I do have a little bit of pullback. Let me pull the engine back some more. See what that gets us. Yeah, guys, we're hitting. I cannot pull this back any further. Probably nicking up my paint by doing what I'm doing now. There I am. Not enough room. It's not enough room outside of cutting. Don't want to cut the mount because I might use that to build off another mount, whatever I gotta do once I get to that point. Unfortunately, I might have to pull all this back out, separate the two, somehow, some way, I gotta figure it out off camera, and we'll get that transmission up in the air with nothing there, get it up over the cross member, the tail shaft part of it, get all that, try to get that figured out somehow, some way. Somebody's at the front door, Watch yourself. I'm not in a good mood right now. <laughs> I don't know how other guys do this, but I don't know if they're doing it in full, full send here like I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take the easiest, but really not that easy route. It's just better to have everything mated and then try to stick it in there. Once again, let me repeat myself. If I had a short shaft transmission, a shorter six inch tail shaft, this would not be an issue. So. If you're trying to do what I'm doing, it's going to be tight. It'll work, looks like. Just make sure you don't have a long shaft transmission. You're going to also have to drop that steering rod. That way you don't hit your oil pond. All right. Well, let me do a little off-camera work. And when I say little, I mean a lot. So I need to go ahead and shut this down and turn these on. Oh, yeah guys over here at chicken eye garage there's a slogan we have around here the difference between a regular idiot and me is that i'm a finely tuned idiot <laughs> <laughs> let me explain what i mean by finely tuned idiot <laughs> uh yeah are you telling me I could have just unbolted this plate right here? Huh? Yep. Trying to get this transmission in position. 
isn't easy this way. But then I turned the light on and I noticed there's a six-sided round thing there. I think they call them bolts. So yeah, ignore everything I just said earlier. You can unbolt that. <laughs> Let me just lay down here and take a nap and get a brain recharge. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So let me go ahead and bolt that mount. And I bet I have a little bit more room. <laughs> so I roughly have this angled about where it's gonna be. It's probably gonna change position one way or the other. Go back, go forward, go up, go down. But there is the two bolt holes right there where the actual mount goes remove the plate there it is right there it's mounted like this now watch what happens when you flip it over the two side holes are going to line up look at that look how close that is to almost just working i don't know what we're going to have to do to make all this bolt down but man that's <laughs> that's nice i just found the mount in one of my containers the polyurethane mount never been installed so let me put this on the transmission we'll bolt that plate the factory uh, plate in place and see what we got to do from there all right guys i got updates first things first transmission just sitting on that jack stand right there and put shaft is on it so she's kind of canted just a skeet taste let me show you what it looks like down below Daddy, yeah two, two of them my boy likes some helicopters and planes and kind of see what it's gonna look like or where it's at i may have to remove it and shim it up down who knows we may have to maybe wall it out these hole holes that'll ease that up a little bit and then we can drill holes here tap them whatever we do there we're in position right now the tail shaft is just sitting on the cross member so it ain't going nowhere let me reposition that to get the engine on the center hole. We'll send them over there to Vegas. And uh, the honeymoon can start from there. Daddy! All right. Another helicopter? We got another helicopter. Let me see it. Let's see it. Well, I don't know if y'all saw that, but that was a helicopter and my boy's excited about it. <laughs> he likes... He likes some helicopters and airplanes. As long as he likes something, I'm cool with that. There it is. There's no engine hoist supporting that engine. It's sitting over there taking a break. All the weight is on those motor pads right now that I tack welded in spot, so... Obviously my tacks are strong enough to hold all that weight up front. Pads are in place, bolts are through it. They're not tight tight, they're just hand tight. Not too bad. So let me take you down below and show you what we gotta do as far as mounting the transmission. With the engine in place, and setting on the pads that I welded on to the frame, the transmission is now scooted just a little bit more forward than it was earlier, which is not that big a deal. But I think this is what, what we're working with. I really do strongly believe I'm gonna use this plate to build off of. If I want to elongate these holes so I can get the flush mount up, I can do that. And then just drill holes on the bottom side here. I don't know how thick this metal is, but maybe just tap it in. Could also just go full send and go all the way through it. You just put a long nut and bolt that way. That's also an option there. The engine, or the, excuse me, the transmission is going to have to go up some in the back. And uh, once that's done, we'll figure out where that needs to be. And I need to figure out what I'm going to do as far as building an extension from, from here to here. And then dealing with that. So let me look at my scrap metal that I got. See what I can make work. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. So after staring at the transmission for two, maybe 300 hours. I think this is what I'm going to do. So as you can tell, this is the crusty mount. And no matter what I try to come up with, this right here is in the way it's a like a crease they made for adding strength to the plate um, they're just it's in the way so what i need to do is create my own 
mount here and I thought about going ahead and cutting off these tabs and welding it to this that's the size of this plate I'm not 100% sure what that is I believe it's 3 16 so let me go ahead and kind of mark and measure I do kind of like the angled look so I may go with that once I finalize this whole piece but let me go ahead and mark measure do what I need to do there and I'll go ahead and cut it down to what I need it to be yeah we coming in hot today this is the rough cut here eight long six and three sixteenths wide and that right there is halfway point I need to make a hole there so I can bolt up the plate to that center hole on that polyurethane mount and then after that we can uh, figure out what we're gonna do there because what I am gonna do is kind of mimic the original mount and cut the corners kind of radius and everything making it look nice and neat let me go ahead and get that drilled and then uh, we'll go from there oh yeah looking good in here looking good in here it's coming along guys it's coming along I went ahead and got the center hole made in this uh, plate I started making for the transmission mount we'll pick back up on that tomorrow because it's getting late we're almost at six o'clock I'm starting to get tired and hungry plus there's noises going on out here I'm starting to get irritated but I got the garage cleaned up everything put away I just got to bring the old double six in and I will see y'all in the morning There you go a couple of flux tacks I think some of that slag kind of made that kind of push away there a little porosity as you would that one turned out all right I think I did okay on the heat because it went through on the other side but what I need to do is probably I don't know inch inch and a half bead here and here should be strong enough right there Kind of the same thing here and at the end of it i want to make some triangulated gussets here get those burned in and that'll be officially made outside of just making it look aesthetically pleasing maybe like i don't know we'll do some i'll try to come up with something creative here cut the corners off maybe kind of do like a curved angle here or there but yeah that's what i've been doing all morning trying to figure out how the best way to make a transmission mount it's not easy when you have nothing to go by but I can tell you right now I'm not I'm not a fabricator so I'm kind of just using the old noodle trying to create the best thing I can create that's going to be strong enough to hold and also look halfway decent all right enough mug time I got some welding to do now guys let me start by saying I ain't a professional welder yeah, I need some, I still need to practice some. Now this one turned out all right. You know, I could go all the way across, but it's unnecessary, really. I can tell you what happened here. I was going, 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 going. I highly recommend not wearing running shoes while welding. The my old foot got hot and caused me to <laughs> kind of pull away. I can show you the top welds here later. Right now, I just wanted to put it in position and show you she's officially supporting her own weight. I think I got it pretty level. Looks all right. I am still going to build some gussets. I just wanted to do a little test fit. Everything's looking pretty good. So let me take this thing back off and commence to cutting and grinding some more. Well, guys, pretty much a day's worth of work to make this transmission mount. A lot of that was just trying to plan everything out, getting everything measured, measured six times before you cut kind of thing. But she's finished. All the holes are made. Everything's welded up, gussets cut, made, welded, welds still slightly ugly, but I'm pretty confident she's structurally strong enough. And when I officially let all the weight off the floor jack, that didn't flex at all. So I'm very pleased with how that turned out. All right, guys, let me go ahead and pull this off, give y'all up close look at it real quick, and then I got some painting to do. So there it is, my ugly welded transmission mount. 
these had some decent clean looking MIG wells this would be a pretty proud piece for me but yeah I'm a DIY guy and I have no skills at welding I'm learning as I go when I first got my welder I got some scrap metal and I think this is my third or fourth pass look at that I thought that was pretty good for when I did it yeah I got some ropiness here and there I think my biggest issue honestly is my traveling I don't either I travel too fast or I travel too slow I think it's inconsistency I think a lot of it's my gun angle as well I think there's just a whole lot I need to work on so any of you that are watching right now are professional welders I take all the constructive criticism you can give me as long as it's respectful please be respectful I'm very sensitive at times <laughs> Tell me what I'm doing wrong. I understand, yes, I need to switch to MIG. I need to stop messing with the flux. I'm just cheap and, yeah. But let's not get into how tight I am with money. I'm still paying off debt, you know. But we're almost done, me and my wife. But guys, this ain't a financial page. This is a, this kind of stuff. This is what we do here at Chicken Eye Garage. We build, we build, yeah. We swap out things that didn't belong and we make it all work. We, we learn as we go around here. And speaking of learning, I went up to the attic yesterday and I got the old center release exhaust manifolds at 45. Yeah, I already test fitted them. Well, I didn't bolt them in, I just kind of loosely held them in by, by hand. Let me show y'all what I discovered. I think you're going to like it. Let's see if I can sneak this in without hitting y'all. easy to do that's roughly in spot yeah it's hard to do that and hold it up but if you kind of see I might be able to zoom in right there she barely touching the only other issue I see is the way it exits out that's gonna be running right into that torsion bar deal so once we get to that point it'd be interesting to see what we got to do there these manifolds are going to, I believe they're going to work. Let me show y'all the other side real quick. Well, I don't know if I can get that in there. Oh yeah, we got it. Watch this good. It tells me I can remove this exhaust manifold if need, to, if need be without removing the shaft. Now this side's got a ton more clearance. Yeah, this is going to work. These manifolds will work, guys. Will work. We're setting this manifold in the back of the bed and look what it says. GM350, left hand. I didn't even realize it said that. Passenger side one doesn't say that. So there it is. Small block Chevy 350 and a TH350 transmission and a 76 Chevy Love. The process was very fun. Took a lot of time. Because guys, I had nothing to go by. There was no videos on YouTube I could just follow the process. I looked on YouTube and I did not find anything. So that's what possessed me to do this video. That way if somebody wants to see the process of how they can do it, they at least have one video out there they can click on and get after it. Everything looks really good in there. Engine looks good. Transmission obviously looks and fits good in there as well. Don't know if either one of them are any count. And based on the bottom of that transmission pan, I'm not too confident that transmission's any good. As far as the engine, that remains to be seen. We'll get this thing up and running pretty soon, and we'll find out one way or the other. And speaking of get it running, I see three big things coming up for this complete swap. That's gonna be an exhaust system, a cooling system, and the one I'm dreading the most, the infamous fuel system. I think the exhaust system, we got the manifolds figured out. We got, well, yeah, we're running those center ram home style ram horn style exhaust manifolds I, I, yeah i don't want to run those ugly things you can if you want to if that's all you got or you can do headers now uh, yeah i'm not doing headers on this unless i plan on keeping it and doing uh, an engine 
upgrade where some heads and cam and all that stuff get a little bit more radical with it then we might dive into the header situation but we got those manifolds to they're gonna work that engine swap kit for transdap there will be a link in the description for that part that way if you want to use what i just used to do something like this then you got it all you gotta do is click on that link and it'll take you to the part and you can buy it from there if that's what you want to do you just got to have a welder that way you can build your own transmission mount whatever you want to do there because maybe you're doing this with a 700 r4 or a four speed uh, yeah i don't know if they make a transmission mount swap kit for street rods hot rods stuff like that but they do have one for an engine kit and speaking of that i need to once i wrap this video up i got to take everything out and um, finish burning in those motor plates since I'm pretty confident they're where they're going to be permanently. I just need to officially burn them in, and then that'll be done. I got to figure out on my end where I want to take this next. I'm thinking cooling system and odds and ends and try to get this thing running. Cooling system, exhaust system, possibly, and then getting this thing at least running. That way I can hear it. I don't know if I'm going to have a drive shaft ready for it at that time, but we'll see. I wanted to say one real quick thing before I wrap up. Hopefully I will still tuned into the mug but there is a company or I don't, it's not really a company it's a it's a guy powerbyace.com he has a website that was built in 2000 or at least that's what it looks like very antiquated looking there's no links to click on so i can't put a link in the description for any of that stuff powerbyace.com if you want to check it out apparently from what i gather from the chevy love group i'm on on the old face space is you send this guy a money order with the part number you want yeah and he'll send you his your product you know if you want to take the money order route he's got all kinds of swaps four three seven hundred r4 chevy small block 700 r4 or like i have a turbo 350 or if you got a muncie four speed whatever you got as far as transmissions he's got a mount kit for it also has ls swap 4060 kind of stuff once again, check out his page or website, powerbyace.com, and you can see not just for Loves, but Monzas, Vegas, and maybe some other vehicles. All that stuff's bolt in. That way you can just drop this stuff in, and you don't need the glue stick for metal. And the time it takes to build all this stuff, making mounts and stuff. But I had fun. This, this is pushing my skills, even though I need practice on my welding skills. It tested me, and I got work to do. Constructive criticism, once again, is welcome for all you professional welders. I got work to do. I know I do, but that's okay. Don't be scared of this stuff. Just get out there and do it. You know, the worst thing that can happen is you got to start over. Well, guys, this is why I ramble on sometimes, because I know you'll enjoy the mug. But I'm going to go ahead and shut the mug down because I got to get to work. I got to pull all this back out. Honeymoon's over. Separate and put the engine on the engine stand. Transmission on the floor, stuff like that. And I got a mount to paint. And I'm not, I don't want to bore y'all with that. So, like, subscribe, stay up to date because, yeah, there's going to be more on this truck for sure. And obviously, my double six, we got that as well. So I got a box right there. I got a video I got to do for that. Like I always say, until then, thanks for watching.